the goal for Corning and Gorilla Glass is to make the glass as strong as possible and as light as possible because most of the use cases are uh, handheld devices where we want the glass to be also uh, light so that's why we want to make it very very thin uh, Welcome at Riverdy University. My name is Kamil, I'm CEO and founder of Riverdy. Today we'll be talking about different kinds of glasses and surfaces that we use uh, mainly to protect displays, uh, but not only. We can protect with the glass the entire uh, device, as you, can, as you will see in the next slides. So here we have a short agenda for today. We'll talk about different glass types, then the surface treatments, what we do to achieve different parameters on the surface only, then about the hardness, this is quite important uh, when we want to protect something, of course. Then painting uh, the glass, uh, how we do it and what we can achieve. And IK rate, this is about mechanical, um, say how much mechanical impact we can place on the glass and it, would, uh, it will withstand um, this, um, uh, this mechanical impact. And then of, uh, about laminated glasses, so why we laminate the glass and what we can achieve uh, by that. So uh, why we even talk about the glass? Uh, the most important thing is of course to protect uh, the display uh, from our point of view, but not only. As you can see on the devices that I show here, the glass is an uh, element of the, of the design, I would say. Yes? So it makes the, the device uh, beautiful, it makes it looks better, uh, and, and uh, can be designed in a way that uh, protect, as I said, not only the display, but could be the, the entire surface of a, of a device, like here in this coffee machine, for example. We have not only a display, but maybe some, some additional graphic or like the whole front of this, uh, of this device. Glass is one of the best materials that we use in electronic uh, to protect the, mm, uh, the screens because it's uh, very hard and it's hard to, to scratch. Uh, so mechanically it's, it's, it's pretty strong. It's a cheap material uh, and it's very uh, good in optics. So we have a high transparency rate of the glass, like more than 90% or even more than 95% in some cases. And uh, the glass is uh, uh, it's widely available, I would say, yes. So, so we know a lot of techniques how to uh, manufacture the glass and how to uh, prepare it for, for, for some special, uh, even the most, let's say, uh, advanced designs. We can change the shape of the glass uh, quite easily nowadays. Yes, so here we have some examples. And now let's talk about types of the glass that we use to protect the screens and, uh, and protect the devices. So mainly we use two types of the glass. One is a chemica chemically strengthened glass. We call it a CS glass uh, from chemically strengthened, of course. And we, uh, we use sometimes a thermally tempered glass, like hardened glass, um, where we use a high temperature. So <clears throat> if you will go and see our standard products, uh, what we use on the, on the touch screens, the cover glass is typically chemically strengthened glass. It's like one millimeter for us, the standard will be 1.1 millimeter uh, thickness. And this kind of glass is, uh, mm, is pretty strong uh comparing to the regular glass yes so what does it mean chemical strengthening it means that we treat the surface uh um, with some ions uh, usually silver and uh we uh we increase the strength of the of the surface of the glass because glass usually break when the surface breaks so uh, we don't change uh, the glass internally with the chemical strengthening we just change the surface uh, hardness and it's enough to make the glass way way stronger as you can see in this table we can make the glass even six times or eight times mechanically stronger than the regular one with chemical uh, strengthening and uh, this is pretty long um, process so as you see it can take several hours and we need high high temperature like 400 and a little more uh, degrees Mm, and then we can compare it to, uh, to thermally tempered glass, which is different way of strengthening the glass. It's just use the high temperature and like pretty fast cooling. Uh, so we need higher temperature, like you know, 700 degrees. Uh, this process is way faster, just several minutes. 
and what we achieve is uh, also strong glass, like four to five times stronger, um, uh, comparing to regular flowed glass, um, but not as strong as chemically strengthened glass. Yes. Um, uh, here <coughs> we have some advantages and disadvantages that are one worth to mention. So for chemically strengthened glass, we can uh, make uh, we can use very thin glass. Actually. Uh, 2.8 is not like the the, the, the thickest uh, glass we can do. We can we can chemically strengthen the, the glass mm, as thick as we want, but we norm normally don't do it. I will explain that. But we can also uh, chemically strengthen the very thin glass, like 0.5 millimeter or 0.7 or 1.1 that we normally use on our touch screens. So it's no problem because we just treat uh, the surface. This process is a little more expensive than thermally um, tempered glass. Uh, but we still use it. And why we use it? Because the thermally tempered glass we cannot use in a thin glass. Yes. So as you can see here, the, the thinnest glass that we can thermally temper will be like 3 millimeter and actually 4 millimeter is the best to start. Mm, uh, in some cases we can do uh, 3 millimeter. If we go uh, lower with the thickness, if we want to strengthen thermally the glass that is uh, thinner, let's say 2 millimeter or 1 millimeter, uh, with the high temperature, the glass starts to floating and the surface won't be flat again. Yes? So it's really hard to control this process with the very thin glass. So normally we do it only for the thick glass. So uh, if we have a thick glass, cheaper will be to, uh, to use thermally tempered uh, solution. That's why it's more popular. That's why here we have only 2.8 millimeter. Like typically, mm, uh, if we go uh, to, to, to thin, thicker glass, we will use thermally tempered. For the uh, thinner glasses, we will use chemically strengthened because we cannot use this process. Yes? So uh, uh, we have two uh, different ways to do it and for different thicknesses of the glass, I would say. Yes? Uh, so these are the main differences, I would say, uh, here. Uh, Okay, so uh, after I discuss the like properties of uh, chemically strengthened glass and thermally tempered glass, I will show you the other difference that these two have. So um, here on the on the left side, you can see the chem chemically strengthened glass broken, and here is the tem thermally tempered glass broken. So this this is also quite important because the chemically strengthened glass uh, breaks like a regular glass because we don't change the in internal part of the glass. As I said, we only treat the surface, we make the surface stronger, but inside the glass is exactly the same as regular float glass. So it breaks like regular float glass. But the thermally tempered glass actually change uh, internal structure of, of the glass. And as you probably know, you, you have seen the, the glass like that, it, it breaks into this very small pieces, which in many cases uh, is better because it's more safe. So these kind of pieces are uh, yeah, maybe dangerous, could be dangerous, uh, but this kind of um, pieces are pretty safe for humans. So that's why we normally use thermally tempered glass in a car uh, or any, any place that we, uh, we may have like impact on humans. Uh, yeah, so, so these tiny pieces. Here we have additionally laminated glass, so that's why it won't uh, break. I will uh, talk about it later as well. So here you have the differences, how it uh, breaks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another property, let's say, or type of the glass that we can talk about is um, OptiWhite and Float. Float is the most common glass that we use in architectural uh, designs, but also in many cases like touchscreens. We use uh, Float, it's, it's most common, most uh, popular, and of course the cheapest. But sometimes we need um, to have very good, let's say, colors uh, uh, as plant, especially like uh, light colors, white colors, etc. Uh, so we use the glass that is called OptiWhite. How we achieve that? We just remove the uh, iron from the glass. Normally, the the float glass uh, has a little bit of iron, and which makes it uh, green or greenish. Uh, if we look, you know, straight, maybe we don't see that, but if we look. Uh, like from the edge, we can see this green color. And of course, if we we'll put the white background, uh, we will see this greenish color a little bit. So um, there is something like OptiWhite and in some projects we can use it, especially, as I said, if you have a white background, then it's worth to at least consider. Usually it's a little bit more expensive. So uh, it, it's worth to check mm, with, uh, with the manufacturer of the pickup mm, uh, what, what we can use uh, in our case. 
Okay, so once we know how the glass is uh, built, how it's being strengthened, how it breaks, and what types of the glass we have, like float and optiwide, uh, we will talk also about the um, surface treatments, but other than, um, than chemically strengthening of the glass, which is like making the glass stronger. So other treatments that we use is um, anti-glare, anti-fingerprint, or anti-reflective, or antibacterial. Uh, about anti-reflective, uh, we have been talking um, in another video when we were talking about the contrast of a display and brightness. Uh, I was showing there how anti-reflective surface can increase the contrast significantly. Uh, and here uh, we, we have others. So anti-glare is, like, like the name says, uh, it's a little bit mm, blur blurry, let's say, uh, image but uh, the, the light that is reflected is it's not uh it's not like from the mirror yes so it's it's uh it's, it's not glare anymore and i have example here of this kind of glass so i have two glasses here so one would be i'm not sure if it will be seen this one is a little bit blurry so it's anti-glare and this one is anti-reflective so it's pretty clear uh, in the past, I would say the anti-glare was, uh, was more popular uh, and even in some commercial devices it was used. But later, uh, mm, the companies, let's say manufacturers, they have seen that the devices with anti-glare uh, are being sold less in quantity than the, the glare one. Uh, it's because as humans, we think that this is something wrong with this image. Even if the reflections are lower, but maybe we are in a shop and looking on the phone, and we don't see the image very clear. Uh, you know, by, by theory or like in practice, it could be better if we go outside. Uh, but still, when we are buying this, we will say, no, this is something is wrong. This is like super clear image. I want this device and I don't want this device. And that's why we don't see any more you know, anti-glare in, in the like consumer products. Yes, everything is glare in consumer products need to be like, you know, bling, bling. Uh, so it could be anti-reflective or could be just uh, regular uh, without any surface treatment. But in professional market that we are working with like medical devices, military devices, we have uh, at least few uh, projects where we use anti-glare treatment. Uh, and it's co of course, it's helping. I would say all military projects that I have uh, that I remember are the anti-glare uh, projects. So we have uh, anti-glare, anti-reflective, both uh, solutions try to reduce the reflections, which increase the contrast, yes? So they are important. There is something like anti-fingerprint. All of you have this on your phones and you know how it works, better or worse, usually worse. So we still can see a lot of uh, fingers, especially when anti-fingerprint is connected with anti-reflective, we see quite strong um, fingers, yes? Like even this glass is anti-reflective and I see a lot of fingerprints here. And on anti-glare, we don't see the fingerprints because it's blurry. So uh, like different advantages and disadvantages of both solutions. And of course we have antibacterial uh, surfaces. There are even surfaces that uh, are like anti-COVID uh, tested. We, we, we can use them in some uh, special cases like for medical devices or public purpose devices. This is pretty uh, uh, important thing and growing market because we have more and more screens in the public places like, you know, McDonald's and other places or or uh, automated uh, cash uh, register machines where we go and want to pay something, we need to, uh, for example, touch the screen more often, more and more. So when we touch the screen and some other people touch the same screen, we exchange bacteria between each other. So uh, it's pretty important to have this, uh, this uh, surface treatment. That's why we offer it as well, uh, usually for a bigger screens, as I said, for public solutions. Uh, yeah. Let's go further to the next slide. Uh, of course, to talk about the hardness, uh, we need to measure it somehow. And for that, we have the uh, mock scale. Uh, so we have like 10 or 11 different levels. Uh, like you see the 10 is diamond. So like the strongest or 11 uh, would, be, would be the strongest and Mm, and the one, two are very, very soft. Yes. So as you see, gypsum maybe is only two. And what we normally use uh, would be uh, would be glass somewhere like six, five, um, seven, maybe. And in some cases, nine for Gorilla Glass. 
uh, that is used on our phones or tablets so so stronger and as you can see uh, we can we can achieve like seven um, with the chemically strengthened usually six with thermally in some cases we can maybe achieve seven uh, for thermally tempered glass but this is maximum here for chemically strengthened glass we can go higher as I said to Gorilla because Gorilla glass is also chemically uh, strengthening the glass uh, patented by a uh, Corning company uh, and it's the strongest that we can achieve in the glass uh, uh, for the for the cover glass to protect the screen yes and it, uh, when we talk about this scale it's about the surface hardness so how hard is to scratch the surface we have other scale I will show it later that talk about mm, mechanical uh, strength of the, of the glass but this one is only about the surface scratch so how, how hard it's to scratch as you know even the nine uh, uh, we, we can scratch, yes, everybody uh, has some scratches on your phone. Uh, it's because this, uh, this layer is very thin. So if we, if we put enough force and we will break this barrier, which is like sometimes 10 micrometers only, uh, if we go a little bit deeper into the glass, then we have a soft glass, yes. We go to, let's say, six or even uh, a lower uh, hardness of the glass. So that's why we have the scratches. It's just a matter of how, how strong we will press it. Yeah, here we have some uh, summary about uh, Gorilla Glass. So now it's like six generations of Gorilla Glass on the market. Uh, of course, uh, the, the goal for Corning and Gorilla Glass is to make the glass as strong as possible and as light as possible, because most of the use cases are uh, handheld devices where we want the glass to be also uh, light so that's why we want to make it very very thin uh, we have also other companies that are making the uh, the gorilla kind of glass similar technology that will be dragon trail from agc so ashai glass corporation and sensation from uh, shot uh, as well uh, they are not that popular but in many cases in many uh, let's say mobile phones or tablets on the market you can find these glasses but sometimes it's not in a spec uh, so you don't know which kind of uh, glass exactly is there but I, I can tell you that AGC and Dragon Ray is also very popular for many many phones that we use okay so now let's talk about the painting so we know the types of the glass we know how to make the glass stronger we know the surface treatment how to uh, make the glass less reflective or anti-fingerprint or antibacterial but still uh, the glass is not enough uh, because it will be only transparent we want to cover it so we want to paint it and uh, typically we paint uh, the glass with the technique called screen printing the most popular and the cheapest and the fastest and when we do the screen printing we need a screen for each color so normally we try to reduce the color numbers to maybe two like you know the background and the logo or three to four uh, because each color is different process we need to like wait until the previous painting will dry and then we need to put another screen and print another color so the more colors the longer the process is and of course the the more expensive it is uh, so with screen printing we try to uh, to have only a few colors and of course we can change the shape of the glass uh, so uh, we can make rounded corners but not only as you can see this is pretty special uh, uh, design of, of the glass and uh, and of course expensive as you can imagine is yes? because first it's just a rectang rectangular piece and you need to go to the CNC machine to be uh, to be milled around until we have the shape that we want but uh, yeah we can we can do this as well and uh, like besides screen printing uh, nowadays we have something called like jet printing it's more like regular a printer that you use in your office uh, that you can print every color uh, and then you can print the the paintings even and this kind of paintings as well of course this process is long and is expensive so it's rather reserved for very special applications uh, but we can do it if uh, if it's necessary and I have examples here uh, this glass this is glass and it was printed yes so it's not like some kind of paper here it's printed mm, directly on the glass uh, maybe I will give you so we can see the quality of that uh, of that printing is, is really amazing I would say what we can achieve uh, but but we need to remember it's, it's expensive process
And of course, here we can have like many colors because it's like in a printer, we use few uh, basic colors, but they are being mixed. Uh, and so so we, we have, of course, the full, full color range for this process. Okay, so uh, now we will talk about the mechanical impact, different than the surface hardness. We talk about the MOS scale for the surface hardment, anti-scratch, and here we have uh, the test and the scale for mechanical uh, strength of the glass, how much energy we can put on the glass before it breaks. And this is uh, being measured in IK rate. Mm, uh, so IK rate is, is uh, basically a scale where we have different levels and different energy that will boost. And this is like, perfectly describe what to do, yes? So if we want, for example, to test IK9, we need to take five kilogram mass from 200 millimeter height, yes? And we do it in a test like this. So we put this mass here, there is an electromagnet and we put our glass down there uh, and we just drop this and we see if it breaks or not. If, it, if not, of course, the test is passed. If not, if it breaks, it's not. So we will try to find the, uh, where we are on the scale. And if we're not where we want to be, of course, we try to uh, maybe change the glass type, like change the uh, from thermally tempered to chemically strengthened, or maybe go to the thicker glass. Sometimes it's just the only solution, yes, to use the thicker glass mm, to have this uh, stronger. Yeah, here is, here is something uh, if you want to calculate um, the impact. 